Hey guys, this is Christian here, and last night were the SAG Awards, so we're going to be recapping the winners, but before we get into this, please like and subscribe to what did you think of this video. So yeah, the SAG Awards were last night, I watched the ceremony, didn't record my reaction, so we're just going to be recapping the winners here. Obviously, I know it won, but we're going to be recapping them. So we're going to start off with Stunt Ensemble, um, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning won, uh, I, which I predicted that would win. Uh, I think most other people predicted that as well. I know Gold Derby predicted that John Wick would win, last I checked. However, I looked... I, I originally went with John Wick 4 because I just copied Gold Derby. However, I looked and Mission Impossible was a, was a lot more of a celebrated award contender this year. John Wick was pretty much blank from every short list for the BAFTAs and the Oscars. And Mission Impossible got two Oscar nominations. So the... Comp, so the... So the um, comparison isn't really that, that isn't really there. Like Mission Impossible was obviously more successful this award season. Um, however, both of them did get Golden Globe nominations in a perfectly relevant category, in a very relevant category that that we need to see every single year. Of course, obviously, cinematic and box office achievement, the best category of all time. Um, but yeah, I predicted that Mission Impossible would win. So yeah. I mean, beat Barbie, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Indiana Jones, and John Wick 4. All right, now now we're going to be going over another uh, an easy category. Best Supporting Actor went to Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. He won everywhere. He won Golden Globe. He won Critics' Choice. He won BAFTA. He won SAG. Um, and he's going to win the Oscars. It's, 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 it's easy. It's a done deal. Um... I wouldn't say it's as done of a deal as somebody like supporting actress because literally Devendra Randolph literally didn't lose a single award, but Herb Downey Jr. is locked in to win. It's obvious. Earlier in the... I've had him winning since July, um, ever since Oppenheimer premiered. Once I saw that he was getting, like, went hype, I just, I just skyrocketed him from not even having him in my top five to just moving up to number one. He never he never left. People try to predict Ryan Gosling and Mark Ruffalo, I, I and I had them as number twos, but they never went up to that number one. Even when people, even when I wasn't as sure, or Robert Downey Jr. would sweep, like what if Ryan Gosling wants Critics' Choice or SAG or something, um, I still predicted Robert Downey Jr. every to win everywhere. I, I predicted him to win Critics' Choice when most other people thought Ryan Gosling would win. Um, and by the time SAG came around, it became very obvious that Robert Downey Jr. was just gonna sweep. Um, so yeah, no surprises. He's winning the Oscar very well deserved. Another no-brainer, Best Supporting Actress, Divine Joy Randolph won for The Holdovers. Uh, she, so she pretty much swapped as well. Golden Globe, Critics' Choice, BAFTA, SAG. And she's going to win the Oscar. It's a done deal. Very well-deserved. And uh, and she also won, like, every single Critics' Award, too. There was, like, there was only, like, five awards. Like, only, like, a handful of awards. That she, like, no, not even a handful. Like, she won, she lost, like, five awards this all season. She pretty much won everywhere else. Yeah, um, Emily Blunt couldn't win, even though she won for A Quiet Place. The only reason why she won for A Quiet Place, even though I think she's very good in it, um, was because the Oscar frontrunner wasn't there, Regina King, for if Beale Street could talk. She wasn't nominated, so I feel like that was just... And I think she was deserving of that win. Might even be my vote out of that lineup, but but still. Um, but still, but still, yeah, she wasn't going to win for here because the Vigil Randolph literally didn't lose anywhere this award season. She's winning. Now we're going over an interesting category. Category prior to the SAG Awards, I thought was a very was, was a very close race, but after here it's like not even a race anymore. It's the, uh, super obvious. Best actor, Killian Murphy won for Oppenheimer. Congratulations on your Oscar. Now that he has BAFTA and SAG, he's winning. Um, I tried to the chaos. I tried to predict Paul Giamatti would win for the holdovers. That didn't happen. What what happened was I tried to predict chaos and won. With the lead acting categories, I try to make predict chaos in one category and the safe like consensus pick in the other. It turns out I was right that one acting category was obvious, one wasn't. However, I completely got it mixed up. But yeah, Killian Murphy's winning the Oscar. It always felt right to me that he would win the Oscar because Oppenheimer's gonna have like the Oppenheimer's gonna have like the biggest sweep in fifteen years since Slumdog Millionaire, which won eight Oscars. This is probably also gonna win eight Oscars. And it makes sense that you would give the lead actor the award as well, doesn't it? Like, it always makes sense. I mean, Paul Giamatti's fantastic in The Holdovers. He would be a great one, too. But 
Killian Murphy, like, I think he's my favorite performance here. And it makes sense, like, it's a biopic performance. He's the face of the movie. The movie's winning seven other Oscars. It makes sense to give him the win. So I'm actually happy that he's going to win the Oscar. Now we have a category that was maybe a little bit ambiguous uh, prior to the SAG Awards, but just became extremely more ambiguous after the SAG Awards. Like, it took all the ambiguity from the Best Actor race, and it just consumed it all up. So Best Actress, Lily Gladstone won for Killers of the Fire Moon. Golden Globes, both her and Emma Stone win because the categories are split up. Lily Gladstone wins drama. Emma Stone wins comedy. Critics' Choice, give it to Emma Stone when I predicted that they would do Lily Gladstone because she's been the critics' favorite this season. BAFTA doesn't even nominate Lily Gladstone, so obviously Emma Stone wins there. And then SAG, I predict Emma Stone wins. Lily Gladstone wins. So, it's been a, it's been a race all the season, and... I actually have no clue who it's going to be until the end. Both of them have their strengths. Lily Gladstone has a narrative. She'll become the first Native American to win Best Actress, um, which is obviously a very important and and history rate breaking. And, and she's going to be making history if she wins. Um, Emma Stone, her movie is more big. Her movie is like more in the awards... Uh, her movie's, like, higher up in Best Picture, I would say. It doesn't even matter because Oppenheimer's winning Best Picture, but but still, a Poor Things is more likely to win than Killers. Um, Emma Stone is more showy. Emma Stone's more showy. Lily Gladstone's more subtle. Um, Emma Stone is the clear lead of the movie. Lily Gladstone, it's debatable whether she's a lead, in my opinion, because the movie's told from Leonardo DiCaprio's perspective. And there's a large chunk of the movie where she's not really that big in it, but still. Oh, with her, with her screen time, she still manages to give a fantastic performance. One of the, probably the best performance in the movie. And both, both winners would be extremely deserving. I think because of the, pa also, also passion's like a really big thing. And I think Lily Gladstone has it. Emma Stone already has an Oscar. I, I think, I think, I think the Oscars are probably just going to want to, give Lily Gladstone her first Oscar, they're not going to want to resort to giving Emma Stone a second, even though, I, even though I think both either of them would be deserving. So by a hair, I think I'm going to predict Lily Gladstone for the Oscar over Emma Stone. But it's a very close race, very close race. Not, oh, I might, I might become, <coughs> I might be doing like, I might be switching until the very end. But for now, I'm going to say Lily Gladstone. And the best ensemble, outstanding cast by outstanding cast in a motion picture it went to Oppenheimer I predicted it everyone else predicted it early in the award season I would have predicted Barbie but Barbie's been like dead or near dead for a while so obviously Oppenheimer overtook it I think when Oppenheimer won Critics Choice I moved it up to number one here and it obviously won but yeah this is basically the SAG equivalent for best picture and Oppenheimer's winning best picture the PGA awards are tonight Oppenheimer's gonna win there nothing else is gonna win there I don't know why people are trying to find a runner-up to Oppenheimer, because it's literally Oppenheimer all the way. Literally nothing else is going to win. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's going to have won every picture precursor, and it's going to have, like, the biggest sweep in 15 years. So I would say this, so, I won't, I won't, I don't know if this is going to be as, like, I mean, everything everywhere, everything everywhere swept the Oscars, won seven Oscars. It won... It lost Globe to Banshees, and it lost BAFTA to All Quiet, because the, the BAFTA just, like, completely showered that movie with awards. Um, but but that cri the Critics' Choice and, and Guild Award, the Guild Award, the Guild Support was really what moved it up to number one by far. And apparently it's, like, the most awarded movie in history. Um, could I, is Oppenheimer going to overtake that? Is Oppenheimer going to overtake that? I don't know, but we'll see. But yeah, uh, but yeah, Best Actress is a crazy category. The other three acting categories are like done deals. Um, if I had to rank the acting categories from least, from most obvious to least obvious, I think I'd go Supporting Actress, Supporting Actor, Lead Actor, Lead Actress. Um, so yeah, th those are my thoughts on the SAG winners. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.